Number, please. Number, please. Number, please. Stop Upminster Exchange. Today, five pints. Tomorrow, order cancelled. These are the last hours in the life of Upminster Manual Telephone Exchange. For almost 40 years, all phone calls, even local ones, have had to be connected by an operator. The men finish another night and the telephone girls arrive for their last day's work. Upminster is the last of some 400 exchanges in the London region to retain personal operator working. It's now being replaced by an automatic exchange. The gates of the old exchange open for the last time, and as the great day dawns, engineers arrive at the new automatic exchange to finalize plans that have taken several years to complete. Building a new exchange is a complicated and intricate business. It was back in 1960 the post office decided that Upminster should have an automatic telephone exchange. The site was chosen with care to fit in as closely as possible with the existing cable network of the district. Laying cables is an expensive business. In spite of the care taken in selecting the site of the new exchange, new cables had to be laid. This cable had to be cut and each of its 2,000 pairs of wires joined to existing cables. Other cables were intercepted and diverted. Only post office engineers were so attractive. Installers from the manufacturers wire up equipment in the exchange. Altogether, there is enough wire here to go halfway around the world. Telephone exchanges need power supplies. Contractor staff fit parts of the main power distribution system and for emergencies, batteries. Every component in the new exchange is tested and tested in to ensure that it conforms to post office standards and so give the people of Upminster a reliable automatic phone service. And there is something special about Upminster's new automatic exchange and that is, it is the first in the London region to be fitted with crossbar switching equipment. But already, the crossbar equipment promises to be much more reliable than the traditional step-by-step -step equipment generally used. Ease of maintenance is an important feature of crossbar equipment. There are changes outside the exchange too. 
many of Upminster's overhead wires have had to be changed. And although a lot of Upminster's new telephone wires are underground, there will still be somewhere for the birds to roost. Every phone had to be fitted with a dial and some customers took the opportunity to have a more modern phone installed in their homes. Having fitted the phones, extensive checks were made to ensure that the lines and the phones themselves would be able to give the best possible performance. For today, the phone is a precision-made instrument. Its dial is the heart which sends out pulses to the automatic system. These pulses, set to fine standards, enable calls to be made. Thank you very much. Is that you're on STD now? Oh, so much, yeah. Oh, number six done. Only 7,394 to go. Next on the list is this typical Essex weatherboarded farmhouse. One of our first telephone customers 40 years ago was Farmer Furs. He's had a new phone too. Farmer Furs is very much involved with the new telephone exchange since it's being built on some of his land. He will notice a change in his phone service and many older people will need to be shown how to use the new automatic phones. Our demonstration unit went to Upminster for this very purpose. That's what we call productivity. Close cooperation with the manufacturers, the Plessy Telecommunications Group, was essential at all stages of planning and equipping the new exchange. Now the exchange is fully installed and testing completed, telephone manager David Barham formally accepts it. The opening date, December 3rd, 1970. This latest Plessy 5005 crossbar switching equipment is reliable, quiet and fast. Also, if a call from one phone to another in Upminster fails first time, the exchange automatically tries again. At the same time, testing equipment, working 24 hours a day, automatically notes these first failures and records them on this teleprint. On changeover day, these wedges will be pulled out, bringing all the automatic lines into use at the same time. The old exchange will be cut off in much the same way. The engineers thread cords through the fuses so that they can all be pulled out together. Only a few seconds will separate these two operations. December 3rd, 1970. The manual switchboard is still as busy as ever. In just a few minutes, though, the old exchange will be quiet for the first time in 40 years. Upminster's Windmill Hall, Edward Weaver, Director of London Telephones, welcomes the guests to the changeover ceremony. It's rigidly followed at least up to 1.15. Thereafter, it doesn't matter. On Mr. Weaver's right is the Mayor of Havering, Councillor James, and on his left, Michael Clark, Manning Director of the Plessy Company, the manufacturers of the new exchange. I would now like, ladies and gentlemen, to ask Mr. Lillipratt to address you. Mr. Mayor, um, Lady Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, 
I think I must uh, straight away resist the... Peter Lillicrap, Senior Director, Post Office Telecommunications, explains the benefits of an automatic phone service and the ease and cheapness of dialing direct. Mr. Lillicrap will shortly call upon to give the go-ahead for the changeover. At the manual exchange, the rate of calls is slowing down. Customers have been asked not to make calls at this time unless they need the emergency services. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, the real purpose for which you've come along this morning is uh, obviously to see the end of an era of the old telephone exchange and the bringing into service of the new. Calls are dying away as operators wait for the new exchange to take over. Through the medium of closed circuit television, there are, I hope, enough monitors about that you can see um, everything. And what I'd like to do now is to call upon Mr. Seddon, who is at the automatic exchange, and he will explain to you the um, uh, present stage at this minute of uh, what is happening. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Seddon, your commentator on this unique occasion. Unique? because up until the last manually operated telephone exchange in the London telephone region has been selected to be the first exchange in the London area to adopt the latest automatic cross bar system. Mr. Lillicrat, Ed Simmons, engineer in charge of Rangeover. May I have your permission to proceed now? We have our fingers crossed. Please go ahead. Last final check. Are you clear, John? Cut out the manual. The old exchange dies on time, 1.15. The engineers check to make sure that all the fuses are clear of the equipment before the new exchange comes to life. Stand by in the auto. Cut in the new auto. power supply adjusts itself as the new exchange takes over and the operators leave their switch room for the last time. The last telephone girl leaves. Call number one for Upminster's new exchange registers. The mayor has made the first dialed call to a number in Sleaford, Lincolnshire. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Who's going to talk first, you or me? The exchange operators come together for their final farewell. Some of them have worked together in Upminster for only a few months, others for many years. Tomorrow they will be going off to jobs in other exchanges where they will be handling only the personal and emergency calls. To the girls, now I'm leaving There'll be tears in your eyes as I go There's a place that I always remember or I came here a long time ago
people of Upminster now have the country at their fingertips.